Good morning, everyone. Um, today's gathering assembly is very important to all of us. But before we go into that, I'd like to introduce and welcome everyone in our presence. We have with us our very own Tusha, Mr. Timothy Andrews. On his right, okay. On his right, we have Mr. Nazim Hussein from the Ministry of Health. And sitting in the corner there, I don't know why they're hiding, we have Mr. Ovid. Um, he, I, I know you know Mr. Ovid very well. Our first pi indigenous pilot in the country and more so the Caribbean. So I think he deserves another round of applause. Also, I learned today that Mr. Ovid is now preparing or creating a translation for all nine tribes, the indigenous language. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Lovely. So we can keep our culture there, right? And Sir Leland, he's part of that as well. So congratulations, sir. I think it's a very, very good step in our community because we don't want to lose what is important to us. And next to him, I'm very happy to see Sir Orlando here today. So let's put our hands together for Sir Orlando. Sir is now working with the Ministry of Marine and Affairs. Sir was our HM and we enjoyed every moment with him and thank you for coming back here sir i see the teachers smiling you know what i mean we miss you we want you to come back <laughs> and our officer mr crandon at the back just making sure you don't make noise you pay attention <laughs> thank you for coming sir so in set in celebrating or keeping with you know what tomorrow is, right? What is it? World AIDS Day. And do you know the team? You don't know the team? Miss Radical? I'm not sure which one it is. Is it equalized? Equalized. So I'm sure Mr. Hussein will educate you more on World AIDS Day today, but before I hand you over to him, I want you to I want to read this little quote I have for you, and remember it now and remember it at the end of this session. Prevention is better than cure, especially when something has no cure. You'll remember that. Prevention is better than cure especially when something has no cure. All right, thank you. Let, I'll all hand you over to Mr. Hussein. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll hand you over to Tusha first. I was saving him for last. Um, a blessed good morning to you students and CSO um, teachers. Good morning, and good morning to Mr. Nazim, um, Ovid Williams, Mr. Ovid Williams, and Sir Orlando Schumann. If you may not know by now, um, Mr. Hussein is a TV host on Channel 11, TV personality. Mr. Um, Hussein here is with us today to talk to us and let us understand the consequences and how we as young people ought to conduct ourselves in this time and age. Um, it is the village council um, view that we should have more of these workshops. And during this year, we met with Redo, Miss Grant, and we spoke at length about these same sort of programs. And when Sir Orlando um, pitched the idea, we didn't hesitate to say, look, we will capitalize and support in this wonderful initiative. 
Uh, and I know it will benefit each and every one of you that, there, that is in this room here today. And as you go out from here, you know, you also educate and, and pass the message on the information on to your peers, persons who couldn't be here. I know some of you have some friends who are you know, bigger than you who recently left school, some left um, after CXC, well, finished school then. Um, and, you know, uh, so don't keep whatever you um, take in here today, don't keep it for yourself, but, you know, get it out there. You know, it, it will help somebody at the end of the day. Um, I'm excited to be here, and I'm excited to be among these wonderful, um, these, these committed um, men, uh, who has the village at heart, who has young people at heart, you know, and who has um, the society that we live in at heart to help educate you, all of us then. Um, Mr. Ho Mr. Hussein, he's on Channel 11. I know most of you don't, I, I don't know if you guys like to look at television. Most of you like your phones, which I know for sure. But if you tune in and he will give you more about that, he's, he's been... He's been on the broadcasting, um, in the broadcasting arena for years. He's a veteran of, the, of, of television. And again, like I said, I know he will share more of that with you as well. So he will give you a time where he's beyond the television on Channel 11, so you can follow his programs and so on. Mr. Ovid Williams over there, I don't know, but I know him as a magician, right? And a musician. Right? He loves to play guitar, he loves to, you know, to, to entertain, and you know, I, I love being around him, I haven't been much around him, but the little that have been around him, I have, uh, you know, have some fun memories. And Sir Orlando, you know, I traveled with uh, Sir Orlando to a place called, um, I can't remember, <laughs> uh, but we traveled um, to another community, and it was, you know, I, 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 I just sit there and, and, and saw, you know, how experienced, how he did his work. You know, he, he is very fluent in what he do, not, do, not only in his speaking, in his presentation, but everything, everything that he do. His inspiration to me, um, Mr. Williams is inspiration to me, and this young man to my right, is inspiration to me as well because I have been, um, I grew up looking at Channel 11 because that is the only channel really we work, um, as we say in, in, in the village, we catch. Channel 11, we look at cricket most. So that is where I, I would have seen Mr. Hussein and I'm privileged to meet him today. So these three, these three um, gentle young men, they're an inspiration to me and I know they are they will, at the end of this session, will definitely be an inspiration to all of us. So on behalf of the people of St. Cuthbert's Mission, we welcome you guys, especially um, you know, our dear friend here. I, I don't know if this is the first time he's here with us, the second time, third time. But we are, we are happy that you are here with us, and we will, you know, we will share this moment for a very long time. And again, let me say this, like, like we had the gender equality workshop just a few days ago. And I think these are, these are um, workshops that is needed in our community. And I know for sure that this, this is not the first time. Uh, we're looking forward to have more of these sessions and workshops as well. So on behalf of the people of St. Cuthbert's and the secondary primary school, we welcome you and the team. And do enjoy your few hours that you will spend with us. Thank you. Um, Mr. Camberman, I will upset your position because I'm not be spending any time on this stage here. I prefer to be in the level because I don't really do lectures. I've never been a lecturer. The two showers are not going to be up here. I'm going to be down there. So, um, but I have to be uh, accommodating because um, Arthur Lau is still a mystery, and I've only met, as you're calling him, Sir Orlando. Um, I only met him via telephone last week, um, because somehow I'm going to figure out how this whole story came into being. And so, I never had the, the thought last week, Wednesday or Tuesday, that I had to make this journey to uh, Makuri. Um, 
And so, yes, I'm here. Uh, and let me just uh, give my tribute to Mr. Williams. Um, I know of his work, I follow his work, especially now on Facebook. And so, you know, you guys, you know, you like to use Facebook and so forth. Uh, there's better things to find on Facebook. Your roots, Mr. Ovid Williams, um, he's there. So I followed him and this morning I met him at seven o'clock and it was almost, you know, he had to leave to go to another vehicle and I regretted it. But it was a journey from my workplace to Providence. And it was a journey for me of a lifetime of history and knowledge. And for his age, and you know, he's now retired, but still want to do things, still wants to create, still want to do things for his people. And that is amazing. And that's a lesson that you should also take with you. That when you finish school here, it's not over. Don't get a job and that's it. Work, get a wife, look at children, or husband, and so forth. It's what you can do for yourself, yes, for your family, yes, or what you can do for your people. And so you take a, 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 the example. And I hope that Mr. Ovid Williams can find a chance at some other time to come and spend a few sessions here with you guys and to motivate you to, you know, for you to chart your way in, you know, a, a way that is acceptable and pleasing. And of course, you guys would know um, Sir Orlando. So my name is Nazim Hussein, and yes, this is my second visit here in um, Pakuri, it was in St. Cuthbert's Mission, and I read, and it was because of television, and I can't remember the occasion, but I can remember what it was fascinating, was to go down to the creek, wherever that is, somewhere in that direction, and only to find out that that's the Mahaika Creek, which I only know it from going on the East Coast. And so that's the only memory I have. And that would have been sometime between 2000 to 2003. Um, so that's a good way back. Never thought that I would have had the chance to visit here again. But you know, when you go to Linden, you just pass the road there, you see the sign, oh, it's a cardboard behind there, and that's it. So it was a pleasure when my boss actually texted me tonight and said you know, that you will have to do a visit uh, here. I said, no problem. Even though I have a commitment later this afternoon, I am sure that at least I put time in place so that I get back to Georgetown for a commitment. And it's a commitment as it relates to World AIDS Day. So who am I? I'm Nazim Hussein, originally from Springlands, Caribbean, um, and then came uh, into the Demerara region and because my father worked in the sugar plantation. Uh, and we were at Lenora, we were at Nkanji and so forth, but we settled in Georgetown, and I finished off my high school in Georgetown. And then, of course, I didn't get to go to university for whatever strange reason. Um, went into the work life, um, and I was mostly into the business area, so I did accounts and so forth. And then, uh, one thing I developed a liking for, and because I had liked, I don't know if you still do that as a subject, English literature. I had liked to do things like plays and so forth, so I ended up um, having a sort of a career acting at the National Cultural Center. And that, I was doing that on, this, on the side with um, my work as an accounts clerk and doing management and so forth. And that led me to doing work at the National Cultural Center, which led me to do television. And I started doing television full time. Um, and even before going to, which was then GTV, now NCN, I used to do, I, I did some stint at what used to be Sharma, and then a TV station in Queenstown. But most of my television life for about six years was at a then GTV, and that made me came here. It was also because of my um, theater life that led me to HIV and AIDS, to do work with HIV and AIDS. And this year is 2022, so it was exactly 30 years ago um, organization came into being, an organization called Artists in Direct Support, where a group of actors 30 years ago came together and decided that they would use their talent uh, to give HIV AIDS messages. And they did it in the form of skits and songs and dances and so forth. I didn't join that group two years later, so I'm 28 years involved in that group. Uh, in 2004, because of that group and my theater, I had left television and I went to work with an international NGO called Population Services International. Um, and I spent two years with them. They closed their operations in Guyana because of funding. 
And I then joined the Ministry of Health in the year 2005, um, which I'm still in that position. I took a break for two years, 2018 and 20 to 2020, and I went back in 2018. In 2005 um, to 2018, I worked extensively across this country, but not every single village and town. Um, and it's good for me, I bring back memories working in Amerindian communities, and I was sharing with Mr. Ovid Williams some of the Amerindian communities I would have visited. Um, some very remote, you have to go far places, climb hills and so forth. And the climbing hills in Mabaruma led me to then to think how, um, you know, I'm not a healthy person. And you guys don't have hills to climb here, so consider yourself lucky. But, and this is recent, this is like 2010, 2013, I'm climbing the hill. I had to make three stops before I go up that hill, and I reached the top, and I'm blowing. And of course, the kids who I went with, they went on their way. And I'm saying, you know, I'm not going to make this trip ever, ever again. A few feet away, I heard there's a little rustling in the bush, and there it is. An Amerindian woman with a wire sheet. You guys know what's a wire sheet? What's a wire sheet? You don't even know. Right. There's something, this is a woman, Amerindian, loaded with cassava, and she's got a child in her hands, and she's climbing up that hill. And that motivated me. I need to get fit. Right? And even a couple of years later, when I went back, um, I did a challenge, but not at that hill, but another hill. And I, I, I kind of passed. So, I mean, life is full of challenges. So I worked with young people from 2005 to 2018, right across this country. So in every community you go, young people, they're different because of culture and because of their environment, you know. So what we're going to talk about, misindicated, and of course everyone would know, um, tomorrow, December 1, is World AIDS Day. World AIDS Day. Some of you might have heard it, but you were just in passing. Can anyone tell me in what year did we in Guyana found the first AIDS case? Now, here's the rule also. While I'm speaking, and you want to have an, ask a question, feel free, ask any question. Uh, you know what's the most stupid question? What's the most stupid question? Chewing gum guy, you're chewing chewing gum. What's the most stupid question? What is it? Are they? No. The most stupid question is a question you never asked. <laughs> so I encourage you guys to ask questions. My, I have a colleague, she just last week, she went to um, Port Kaituma, that's of Matthews Ridge. Again, a mixed community, that's what I'm Indians, and she was amazed, and she spoke to a large gathering. Now, I work with small groups, 20 to 25, but she also did the whole school, and she was surprised to know the amount of questions, the type of questions that the students ask there. So feel free, if you have a question, raise your hands, and I will know when to shut up and allow you to ask. I know you have teachers here, and you have the master and two shallow, and you may not want to ask questions. Um, or you may figure oh, your students would laugh at you, your fellow students. But I said, the most stupid question is the one you never ask. So feel free to ask questions regardless of who is around. When did we have the first case? When did we find the first case? The first case was in 1987. All right? So who is the maths teacher and who is the maths genius? That's how many years ago? 1987 from 2022 is how much? In my days, we had, to, we had a subject called mental arithmetic. And it was, a, it was a subject you had to go to the teacher, and the teacher would ask you mathematical questions. You, you had those days, Mr. Ovid? Yeah. You didn't do mental arithmetic? I used to get Right, I used to get licks. They used to give you the, 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 the questions in a, you know, two multiplied by six divided by eight, and you had to think about it and answer the question. Now you look at the calculator, 35 years ago. 35 years ago, we found the first AIDS case in Gaia, and that's in Region 4, Georgetown. All right? 35 years ago. Maybe there's only two persons in this room, possibly, no, three, or, or a couple of us, who are 35 years and older. 
It means all of you here who are 25 years and under was born into a world of HIV. All right? And so for some of you, because you're young now, and, and HIV is no longer that much of a big issue, but it is, you know, things like, you know, most of you will have been, and I see one, two, three, three persons with masks, you were with, with your hands. I mean, a lot of you will be cons was, would have been consumed by COVID over the past two years. Just as how COVID was this deadly thing, when HIV, when we got to know what it really was, it was something scary, and we thought it was then deadly, right? And so 35 years ago, we had our first case here in Guyana. And again, feel free to ask any questions, right? And even if when we are finished, even though I have another appointment afterwards, and you have any burning questions, you can meet me at the side there and ask me a question. When I went to Scotland Line Park last week, some of the guys came up and they cornered me and they asked me some questions and so forth. So, HIV, that's an abbreviation, right? Um, what is the H for? Human. Anybody's got a different answer? Good. H is for human. The I. What was your name? David Rock. David Rockliffe. So David seems to know a lot of stuff here. So you guys, you know, have David here who got tons of information. You guys need to lock on to David Rockliffe. So, so the I is for what? Immune. A halfway right. You did that for your um, SBA or subject? With subject. So I'll show you Oh, you did, you did HIV social studies. I have to remember that one. So it's H for a human. I is for immunodeficiency. And the V is for? Virus. So H is human is because it can only affect humans. Immunodeficiency speaks to our body's immune system. I always used to make a joke, um, and it's not to criticize religion or so forth. I always said, you know what? Man might be able, for us to may be able to see what God looks like, but man may not be able ever to recreate the immune system. The immune system is that which protects our body from sickness, diseases, bacteria, and so forth. As we grow old, that immune system, you know, breaks down. What HIV does, it breaks down your immune system more rapidly. And so, simple things that your body can fight off can no longer fight off. So a simple common cold, a menu, the cold is also a virus. The cold is a virus that we don't have a cure for either. But of course the cold is not deadly. But a person who has a cold living with HIV can have a rough time. So when your immune system really collapses because of HIV, diseases have a good time with your body because your body does not have a defense mechanism. So your immune, your immune system is like a, an army, a defense force. And if that force is weakened, then the enemies, which are, which are diseases, can overtake you, you die. And of course, that's immune deficiency. Deficiency means lack of, and virus, you know, bacteria, a bug, things that make you feel sick. So that's H, I, and V. What is AIDS now? A I D S. So we can't have Mr. Rockliffe alone answer all the questions. What's your name? Shafiq Hussein. Where do you get that name from? Definitely we're not related. I'm Nazim Hussein. All right. But who knows? No. 
my Hussein is from way down Springlands. Right, my father would come and see a Shafiq Hussein here. That's the one I have to take with. Now, Shafiq, what's the A for? Which class you're in? Grade, grade seven. And so you just came across from primary school, right? Good. Shafiq, so you know what's A for? No, sir. You gotta ask Rockcliffe, right? You gotta keep good friends with Rockcliffe. And what's your name? But you gotta speak low. Pierre. Pierre Andrews. Or Pierre. You know what the A for? You read them also. You in the same class? Is somebody putting up their hand to answer? Are you a lady? Yes, young lady. What's the A for? Acquired. Acquired. Excellent. What acquired means? Acquired means to get. A I B S. And this time, Rock, uh, Mr. Rockley, the I um, and the A I D is separated. The I is for immune and the D is for deficiency. So, acquired immune deficiency and the S means syndrome. Acquired means to get. Immune deficiency speaks to a lack of our body immune system. Syndrome means a collection of. A collection of diseases, one or more, can take us down, and when our body doesn't have the, that defense mechanism, that immune system to fight that collection of diseases, we die. We go to church, and then they bury us. But, from the beginning of time to now, the well, beginning of HIV to now, um, people thought then it was a death sentence. HIV is not a death sentence. There's a difference between HIV and AIDS. HIV is the infection stage, and AIDS is a disease when the disease infect, take control of your body. Unfortunately, because I didn't know the mechanism on what I'm going to, you know, breach. Um, I did only print a limited amount of information on HIV and AIDS, how you can get it, how you can't get it. Um, I asked the HM to at least share it to um, students who will be most appropriate, and that's the most um, senior students. Um, if other people would need, then you can copy. Um, but in this day and age, and that is something we took for granted. In the early when we went out, in, and, and the work with HIV didn't start in 2005 with the ministry, with young people, it started way back in 1999, uh, when we used to go out into the communities um, with, with the NGO that I was affiliated, or still affiliated with, Arkansas Direct Support, and we would do exercises, sensitizations uh, with young people. But now we don't have to do much printed material, materials because we kind of figure out young people are online. Do you got internet here? Wi-Fi? Yes. Right. We well, use Wi-Fi for now. TikTok, right? How many of you are on TikTok? Raise your hands. One, two, three. Please be truthful. Raise your hands. All those who are on TikTok. Right. So your hands hurting, right? Where's your teacher? Uh, you got to monitor TikTok with some of these students. Uh, um, not here necessarily. But where, a couple of schools where I went, I had, you know, not so good news of what students are doing on TikTok. Uh, I was amazed one entire class was suspended from school because they did the shooting of TikTok in the classroom and that put the school in jeopardy. All right. So I know you guys communicate. I mean, some of you are young now and you don't have money to buy data, but the older folks you would have. And so you've got to be careful what you do. And that's why I tell you, when you're on Facebook, look for Mr. Williams. That's a wealth of knowledge. And even if, you know, when you look at his journey, and I hope one day he's going to write his journey so that we can read. I mean, a couple of Amerindians in our country, which I had the privilege because of television, um, to have, you know, be next to, learn from them, just for a short period of time, we leave a mark, Uncle Basil. Where is Uncle Basil from? Maruka. All right? He's written book. Brilliant guy. I interviewed him more than once on television. And there's one guy all the way from Napi, 
way down in region 9, never went there to see him. He came to town. A, bal a balata figurine artist, George Joseph or George Tancredo. Fantastic person, skilled. Of course, you guys are not exposed to those kind of conditions or kind of environment where you make these little figurines, toys like of the balata. Absolutely. And so you have people who you, in your heritage, as Amerindians, who would have done well. So use your social media to track these people. Like Mr. Williams. Yes? Pardon me? George Simon? You know George Simon? Yes? Sure, George was, um, but alas, George is no more. I have a picture, an iconic picture with George and his little son. Um, I took out on a, um, an Amerindian heritage walk. Um, but these days I get lazy now and the car didn't have to walk. And when they do have the walk, they keep it a big secret. Um, so I, I used to go to the Amerindian heritage walk, I used to take a picture. So yes, Mrs. George Simon, he too um, is a good iconic person, very good. So you, you keep track of those um, famous Amerindians. Your grandfather, brother. Right, okay. I love to. Um, I'll find out more about that kind of uh, uh, heritage, how Hussein came into being with George Simon. Right, so back to HIV and AIDS. But I was saying how to utilize social media. Social media can either make you or break you. All right? So you utilize social media to make something better of yourself. So HIV and AIDS. So now we know the definition of what is HIV and what is AIDS? Any questions? Yes. What is, what's your name? Amelia. Amelia? Amelia. That's like the falls. Is Amelia falls somewhere? That's the correct. Amelia was the um, changed to Amila. Amila. For some reason, but the original name is Amelia. Oh, that was when they were going to build that um, solar, uh, the hydro thing, right? The hydro project. Yeah. Right. So, Amelia, Amelia what's your question? Never ever got that question ever. 2005 to 2022, never got a question. And so sometimes there's be surprised uh, by some of you young people. So I have to boast about that question because only when we go, when we do our outreaches and we go back, we only boast to one another the type of people who we reach and how good the students are and so. So I have to take back that question. But Amelia, I'll get to that question when it comes to when persons are infected. It's a very good question. So, any more questions? Fantastic questions from Amelia. How can people contract HIV? Or how people can get HIV? Yeah, yeah don't look back. You who's looking back? You mentioned something just now. <laughs> Pardon me? <coughs> right, but that's not the <laughs> the thing is, is we, are, we, are, we are here in this environment, we cannot want to speak freely. But the two shall mention something very important, and that I would have tell you at the last, but he brought it up at the beginning. That whatever you would have brought here, you impart it to, you know, when you go back to your home or your little neighborhood and so forth, your smaller brothers and sisters talk about it. Right, so he mentioned two things there. Sharing needles. Anybody know what he means by sharing needles? Yeah. 
What can he do? Needle. Needle. Right? So you have to be more specific. But sometimes we're not able to. Um, we can know something and we can know what it is, but to define it, we're not able to put words in a sentence to define it. So sharing dirty needles. Now, when I had asked the question way back when at another place, the person said, and they asked the question, you know, I said, what do you mean by needles? And they said, I'm sir, sewing needles? <laughs> and no. But there's a bug there. It is injectable needles. Needles that you get injection with. Where people use drugs. All right? By taking in drugs into the syringe and they inject themselves. So a person who inject themselves and then decide you know, to leave some drugs in and give it to another person, if that person, let's say, I inject myself and I'm HIV positive, and I immediately give it to my friend and he injects some of the drugs into his system, um, that could cause a transmission of it moving from one person to another. All right? But in Guyana, we do not use drugs by needle. So even though that's one of the ways you can get HIV, that's not one of the areas we really concentrate on. But that's one of the ways, sharing needles. So young man, you said another thing. There's another thing he said that everybody laughed. What he said? Sex. Right, sex. So I'm going to ask the question now. Everybody know what is sex? So who wants to tell me what's the definition? Right, so we all know, but we don't want to, you know, because we don't know how to put it in the correct place in social studies, don't really need to talk much about that. But that's not the 100% answer. It is unprotected sex, so that's 50 out of 100, you got there, unprotected sex. But there's a continuation. So it's unprotected sex with an infected person. So other person has to be infected. So I'll tell you the story. This is a true story. All right. So I did ask, and of course, this is a large room. Um, and most of the time that I do work with young people, especially in school, normally on a weekend, there's no teachers. And so students tend to be more free to speak. And sometimes they're not free to speak because once you have boys and you have girls, they still don't want to speak because boys you might want to say certain things in front of the girls and vice versa. So there was this day when I did ask the small group of 20 if they know what is sex. And one person said no. And this was secondary school student. So what I did was I had to do a little demonstration about penis and vagina and so forth. So you know, I had a marker and I said, this is a penis. And then you know, I, I made my hands in a circle and I gave a demonstration. And so I normally take, take, take that story elsewhere, like how I bring this story here to you. So there was one day, in the, and I remember the year 2013, and it was this time of my best session ever. It was an all boys session in Region 3. And because they were all boys, they spoke their mind. So I don't know why, when I was doing back the same story about the marker being a penis and so forth, because I was having this good conversation with these boys, the questions blurted out to me. I said, Does anybody in this room know what's a penis? <laughs> Trust me, you don't. One boy, age 13, says no. <laughs> yeah. And everybody started to laugh. All his other friends started to laugh. And even his friend next to him. And I asked the friend, do you know what it is? And the friend says yes. And I said, well, tell him. And his friend whispered, and he started to laugh. And I said, you know what it is? He said yes. I said, what do you know it is? He said, Johnny boy. <laughs> That's what he knew. That was his education. This is seven and two, that's nine years ago. That's nine years ago. And so that tells you that, you know, 
we are not educating ourselves, we think education is just social studies and mathematics and so forth. Right, so, it's unprotected sex with an infected person. So one sharing dirty needles, needles unprotected sex with an infected person. What else? Blood, we're gonna to get to blood just now. The way is how it occurs. The other way is mother from a mother to her child. All right, from mother to her child, and we'll explain that a bit. So we got three now done. The fourth way is blood transfusion. You guys know what is blood transfusion? Well, right, you kind of share blood is if you receive blood or give blood. When you go to the Guyana at the hospital there, the blood transfusion service, to give blood. That's blood transfusion. And if you're in an accident and you need blood, you receive blood, that too is blood transfusion. So if I'm HIV positive and I go and donate blood and they didn't screen that blood properly, and mind you, they do, you know, you just, you know, they actually the questions before they take the blood from you. And even when they give you the blood, and then they will do tests on it a couple of days later, and if they find the test, not only for HIV, if other disease or other diseases, they reject the blood. So that's another way, that's another way you can get it. So the four ways. Have unprotected sex with an infected person, from a mother to a child. Those are two main ways we get HIV con uh, being contracted in Guyana. The other two, it's not on the Guyana radar in terms of blood, uh, blood transfusion and to mother to a child. But mother to child, uh, unfortunately, um, because we find mothers not going to observe proper health systems or access to health facilities, they're going in to when they're almost ready to deliver to the health center, and by then, then they find out they're HIV, they're HIV positive, it's too late. So you find women in remote areas, they get pregnant, the nearest health center is 10 miles away. They're not gonna go, they're gonna go wait until the time to deliver them, they go then they find they're HIV positive. It's too late now to bring forth a baby that is HIV negative. Once you get into the clinic system, as soon as you know you're pregnant, and you, they find you're HIV positive, they put you on medication, and coming back to Amelia talking about ARVs, um, and ARVs mean antiretrovirals. Those are the term, that's the term used for the medication you take to suppress the amount of virus in your body. Years ago, it used to be a set of tablets you take sometimes two times a day. Now it's down to one tablet, one time a day. And as Miss did say, there is no cure. A few people around the world by some mystery have been cured. And the only one that I have worked, I dealt with, I read about was something that they call bone marrow transplant. Don't fatigue yourself, there's only one person in the world who did that. It's an expensive treatment, sort of, want to use that word. And that's the only person who has been cured. What the ARVs that they have made now and they are improving gradually is that if you are ARVs and you continue taking your medication, you have to take it for the rest of your life. It brings down the viral, as they call it, the viral load in your body to such an extent that you cannot be tested positive. So if you are tested for HIV and you have HIV, it's called you have a positive test for HIV. If we can't find, and in Guyana, we don't test for HIV. We test for something called antibodies. So each infection brings about a specific antibody for that particular infection. And what they do in Guyana and around the world, they test for the antibodies. So if they see HIV antibodies, we know that you're HIV positive. And then they can either put you on the treatment immediately, or if you're good enough, you're strong enough, 
they will allow you to live, uh, continue living for a while before they put you on treatment. But that's between you and your doctor. So ARVs now can almost now put you away, whereby you can be undetected, as we can say. And we're finding cases, not only in Guyana, but around the world, that if you would have had unprotected sex, that you might not transmit to another person. But that in itself is a risk. So the four ways you can contract HIV is having unprotected sex with an infected person, but with a child, showing dirty needles, blood transfusion. Now there is a fifth way. But before we speak about the fifth way, here's my other question for you. Well, we know how we can contract the virus. Now, how does the virus get into your body? How does a virus get into your body? How did you get into this auditorium? Walk in. How did you walk in? Through the door, right? So for you to get in here, you have to find an opening. Because you can't come through the window, the window has bars. Opening. Oh, I thought you were going to come ask me a question. <laughs> I thought so good. I thought I got <laughs> All right. So you have to, so the virus needs an opening to get into your body. And these openings can be very, very tiny, tiny, tiny openings. Now, so we know how you can get it. We know how it can get into your body. And where can we find the virus? Where can we find the virus? In an infected person. So, let's again, I'm using myself as an example. If I'm infected with HIV, where can I find the virus? The cells? Blood cells? Okay, yes, I heard blood earlier on. Blood? So, the general rule is HIV can be found in all bodily fluid. It can be found in saliva, it can be found in perspiration, it can be found in urine, all bodily fluids. But there are four fluids, there are four bodily fluids. The virus is in sufficient quantity that can cause a transmission. And so blood is one. The three others. One is male related and two is female related. Pardon me? The no 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 fluid. You 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 you're getting there but you're confused. It's a rocket, his brain is rocket. Yes, you're raising your hands. <laughs> so you're dancing. <laughs> so I thought you were raising your hands to ask a question. All right. Pardon me? Where's the next one? Take a guess. So the next one, female related, breast milk. Who has tasted breast milk before? Everybody. Everybody. Right? So breast milk. The virus is there in sufficient quantity to cause a transmission. Two. Two more to go. One male, one female related. So, when you're having sex, males, what happens at a particular period in time when you are almost finishing up? What happens? Sperm. Hey, Shafiq. <laughs> but that's not the correct answer. Well, ejaculate, yes. But what comes out is not directly sperm, it's semen. You heard that word before? 
And if you haven't heard that word before, it's not the guys who go fishing outside in the ocean, the sea. That's the fluid that comes out. And in that fluid semen, you have sperm. So it's not sperm, it's the semen. So that fluid is, um, contains a virus in sufficient quantity that can cause you to become infected. And the fourth fluid, and I won't go into details, I will ask, and of course it's female related, and hope, the thing is, you have a good relationship with your teachers, and that is something I would, you know, I've gone to a few schools, and you've heard that a lot of the students sometimes don't have good relationship with their teachers, um, for so many reasons. And so, but, you know, when you're not at home, the next people who look after you for, from, 8.30 to 3 o'clock, your teachers. And so you should go to your teachers to ask questions. As I said, ask any questions. Raise your hands, ask any questions. And even if the teachers are not equipped to answer the question, they will go and find out and try to come back. But sometimes some students say, well, you know, the teachers won't talk to me because they ask certain questions. Uh, but still, you need to be educated. Do not take things and not want to find out. And don't run the risk, because now you can ask the internet anything. Actually write it down in Google. What do I need to do so, 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 so? And an answer will come up. Sometimes it may not be the correct answer. And so find out from a teacher. And the teacher might be able to, because they're more mature and they have more knowledge, they might be able to find an answer given your situation. And so the fourth fluid is vaginal secretion. Vaginal comes from which word? Yeah, right, Amelia. <laughs> Shafiq, why are you hitting just now when you hear the word vagina? <laughs> you know what's a vagina, right? What is it? You're going to regret sitting in front of me. <laughs> anyway, Shaki, you're going to Google it. <laughs> and you'll get the correct definition. <laughs> all right? Of course, we love to use it and call it all sorts of names. All right? We know it as, you know, like the guy with the Johnny Boy. <laughs> right, so those are the four fluids. <laughs> Blood. Breast milk, semen, <laughs> vaginal fluid. Actual teachers, you don't know. Right? Girls, actual teacher. I hope the teachers know. Yes, you know? Good. So ask Miss, she knows it. Not now. When she's going home, ask her. So the virus has to have an opening. So here's a word I'm going to leave with you. Opening, yes, is a word, but the other word I leave with you is called bruising. Bruising. Right. So here we have to be careful with now. That's the only way that you could get infected by if you have opening. So when you're having sex, that brings about bruising. From mother to child, when the child is coming through the mother's womb and vagina, that's bruising. The child will be bruised, infection. Sharing dirty needles, when you puncture your skin with a dirty needle, that's a bruise or that's an opening. And of course, blood transfusion is an opening. Brings us to the fifth way of how you can get HIV and AIDS. And at this time, I always speak about a scary story. So here's a scary story. And I always use the Linden Suzak Highway in this scary story. We're all going on a trip to Linden on the Linden Suzak Highway. You know, there's always got accidents with careless drivers. So we're in a bus, all of us. And one of us in this bus is HIV positive. And there's going to be an accident. But nobody will die. What happens in accidents? They cut some bruises. You get openings and you have blood flow. 
I make sure I be positive. I'm gonna get some cuts and bruises, blood will flow. What do you think can happen? You can have a transmission. That's what, what we call, overall, we call that occupational exposure. So, I always use the police also as an example. You know, that's not a bad people in this village, you know, police going out, fighting and all sort of things. We are fighting, chopping up and boring up and all sort of things. Police man is going to be called part of fight or get involved in somebody's bleeding. He's got to hold somebody and part them and so forth. The police now have to look out if he doesn't have any opening. If he's got an opening, a fresh bruise, and he goes into a situation where they have blood flowing, and he doesn't know the status of these people, and we don't know the status of people, then that could put the police in jeopardy. So we do advise the police when we do workshop with them, don't walk with the gun alone, that makes no sense. Make sure you walk with gloves. For those people who would watch television and watch boxing, long even before HIV, the referees will always wear gloves. Because when you hit one another in the face and so forth, you always have a bruise and cuts and so forth, and there's always blood. The referee protects himself. So, bruising, you have to look at. Even teachers. Now, we said that some children Sometime, I think last year, 2021, two, ch two children were born with HIV. The years gone by, you have quite a few children born with HIV and AIDS. Guess what? They're in treatment. They are not different than you. They go to school. Yeah. I visited one school in Georgetown and I would have known of two students who are HIV positive attending the school. So, you have school going in, there's a school ground there, you guys have sports. One of the kids is HIV positive, you don't know, you don't know who is who. Kids fall on the ground, there's bruising, teachers will go and help, or the people who do first aid will go and help. You know, you cut up meat and so forth the morning before, you just have a slice of your finger, you don't know. That's what you call occupational exposure. But occupational exposure is also more risky in the healthcare setting, whereby nurses and doctors will give an injection, and if they give a patient who is HIV positive and they accidentally inject themselves, they can also contract HIV. Any questions? I mean, they did my and my answer, my answer to ARVs answer your question, or you still have some more things to add to it? You're okay with that? Right. Any questions on how we can get it, how we can get it? The fluids? Come on, the line path people ask some nice questions. And because your teachers are here. Can you get it from kissing? Yes? No, sir? Yes. Yes. Now, mind you, it's, you must have a fluid, you must have openings. So saliva has a virus, but it doesn't have enough to cause a transmission. Now, what kind of kiss we will do? Kiss to bring about bruising and cuts of tears? What kind of kiss we do, man? <laughs> But people might say, well, sir, suppose now they have a um, little disease, gum disease, or a possibility. But, you know, regular kissing on the lips and so forth. And the thing is, there, there's never been a recorded case of um, kissing causing a transmission. If you hug someone... No, that's not true. <laughs> so they don't want to kiss. They don't want to kiss. They don't kiss yet. No, um, well, <laughs> you have to do your research. 
So I'll tell you how um, I got scared once when I realized that I might have been infected with HIV and AIDS. So when HIV came about in 1987, 88, and so forth, you know, you start to hear news from all over that it's only come, only black people get it, and only gay people get it. You know, you know who are gays? Who are gays? Homosexuals, you know that word? If you don't know, find him teacher, but you know. So I realized, well, I'm not a black person, and I'm not a homosexual, so I can't get it. So I never did it uh, to educate myself. So I did tell you, I used to act at the cultural center. And one of the actors, um, who was kind of mixed with black and Indian and a little bit of Portuguese and so forth, in 1989, I think, he came down with HIV. And he was my neighbor. He never bothered me. We always act together. And I know, well, I'm not like him, so I can't get it. So one night, we were at the cultural center, we were acting in a skit. And this skit is like in a classroom setting with a, lot, a couple of us in the benches. And this guy, his name was Andre, he was also in the skit. And Andre sneezed, a real sneeze. And because of the lights in the culture center, I saw the vapor of the sneeze. And we saw the vapor go up into the sky, into the air, and I saw the vapor came down, and I knew it came down on all of us, and there and then, I knew I was infected. <laughs> and so the next day I called Andre, we didn't have a landline these days, no days. Um, I called him and I said, Andre, this thing happened last night. Am I infected? And he said, yes. <laughs> and I got word for a couple of days. And I decided now to go and find out for myself how you can contract HIV. And then I realized how idiotic I was to believe Andre. But you can't get it by that. And so I called him and I said, Andre, and soon even before I could have speak and he figured out what was going, he started to laugh at the other end of the phone because he knew he set me up. <laughs> he set me up and, and he said, now I know you've gone and you, you served up for yourself. And in life, that's all we got to do. There's only so much we can learn on that blackboard. And there's only so much of things the teacher can impart on you. But you got to go and find out yourself. <clears throat> so I used to like history, and I still do. History is something that comes naturally to me. So even this morning, I was telling Mr. William, you know the story Christopher Columbus came to this park, why he came here. I want, you know, and it's pretty interesting. I had to go outside years later, long after I left high school, reading other books. I get to understand the real reason why Christopher Columbus came here and what prevented him to go to India through the land route. Did they teach history in here? No history? Right. History is something very good. Give me your own history. Give me your own history of your village. I hope somebody will write it. A history of St. Cuthbert, so now for who? Right, so educate yourself. Any questions? How you can get it and how you can't. So, you can't get it by kissing. You can't get it by hugging or touching. You have to have opening. Now, here's the opening. that you can even know about and put it in context. So you guys, you um, you got to here, right? You line up here? Yeah. Right. After the lining up, what do they do? After the barber line you up, what he does? Spray, right? They do that here or they just touch here? So when you spray, what happens? It burns. What, what that means? There's an opening. And that's sometimes all the opening the virus needs to get into your body. Yeah, even though you don't see any blood once they put that razor blade there, the main, my main fact is it brews, I mean it burns, I mean that's an opening. So you gotta be careful with openings. Questions down there? Don't sleep away on me.
you guys have to ask a question. Uh, back over here, it's only over here from Mr. Rockley, that way you get some questions immediately back. Any questions from over here? Right, Alex is asking a very important question, how can you get HIV? We just went through that. Uh, please then ensure that when uh, I share the flyer out, or when Miss or the head teacher will share the flyer, you'll give Alex you one of the flyers. You get it with unprotected sex, but an infected person. You know what the sex? What is it? Tell me. How old are you, Alexi? How old are you? 11. 12. <laughs> you sure you're not 13? 11. 12. What year were you born? July. <laughs> July what? July when? 15, 20th? July what? What day in July? Uh, the second of July? And what year? 2000, 2000 and 2010. Right, I was born on the 20th of July, 1963. You gotta catch up. Right, so how you can get it? Unprotected sex with an infected person. Uh, whoever is his friend, please ask him and let him tell you this afternoon what sex. Uh, from mother to child, sharing dirty needles and blood transfusion. You can remember those, Alex? Right. I hope you got a flyer and you will know. Any other questions? Yes, Amelia's friend. Excellent question. The first part is very, very excellent. Is there different, is there uh, other types of HIV? Um, HIV, there's HIV 1 and HIV 2. I'm not going to go into what is HIV 1 and HIV 2. HIV is HIV, but HIV 2, what they call HIV 2, can be found mostly in Africa. And HIV 1 is mostly found in these parts of the West. Um, how long can a person live? So, at the bachelor's program where I work, I'm now the food bank manager since August 2020. And so I give hampers to persons who are living with HIV and who are very sick, uh, who are not working, who have la they're from large, they have large families and so forth. So they have to fill up a form every time they access a hamper from their treatment site. Then they come to my place and they collect the hamper. And so I would look at their date of birth. Actually, I would look at their age. And you would be surprised. Amelia's friend, what is your name? Pardon me? Alim? Alia. So Amelia and Alia. Right. And you would be surprised how many, and those are only people who I know who come to the food bank. Because not everybody who is on treatment gets food hampers. And you'd find some of them are 60 years old, in their 70s. And in 2020, I got about 23 hampers um, from an organization. And I decided to give the 23 hampers to the 23 oldest people who are on treatment and who need hampers. And who, who are in my database. I found 23 people between the age of 85 to 71. And so it means they were got to be infected more than 20 years ago. So yes, you have people who are living longer. And apparently, based on my experience, the medication once taken every day is making people live longer. All right? So very good question. As we say, it's no longer a death sentence. Very good question. Any other question? It has any symptoms? Very good question. Excellent question. What are the symptoms of HIV? So it's very, anything can make you sick will bring up symptoms. So COVID, you guys know what the symptoms of COVID, right? 
How many people in here got COVID? Raise your hand. Have COVID? A million had COVID? Right. Excellent. Not excellent you have it, but excellent you have the experience of having it. So symptoms can range from almost just like COVID, a fever that don't go away, something like cough that don't go away, rapid weight loss, headaches, um, and other symptoms from other diseases. Alright, so but you got one of the ones that um, is mostly noticeable is weight loss. And then you have sores breaking out on your about your body. Now mind you, not because you see somebody um, inspect the cranium. This cranium is your name, right? You see, you see, you see the police cranium there, he's nice and wrong and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is December, this is November, and in February, you know, Mr. Cranham, you know, and he goes out to see his family, and then he comes back, and you see Mr. Cranham like this. You don't jump to the conclusion of what Mr. Cranham got AIDS. <laughs> because he lost weight. It means Mr. Cranham would have gone and uh, worked out. And I have been doing that up and down, and sometimes I can lose 20 pounds in three months and so forth. All right? So that because somebody with symptoms means they have it. All right? Now, how do you protect yourself against HIV? How do you protect yourself against HIV? Yes, Amelia? Using condoms. Everybody know what's a condom? Condoms is a balloon. <laughs> uh, he knows about it, yes. <laughs> Teachers in this school is doing a terrible job. <laughs> That's what you told. <laughs> Condoms is a balloon. <laughs> right. Have you ever seen one? Have you ever seen one of these balloons? Where? How many of you have seen a condom before? Raise your hands. Lies. What's the whole set? Lies, lies. It's only teachers. Amelia, Amelia uh, right? Yeah. How many of you have used a condom? I'm a teacher. How many of you have used a condom? Raise your hands. Okay. Now, um, I know, and this has been no disrespectful. This is not disrespectful to people who are, I know people of people have religious belief. All those who are Catholics here, raise your hands. Any Catholics? But there is, you're Catholic? So there's a, you know, a type of Christianity that's called Catholics. Right? That's like how you have Presbyterians. What is the church here? What is the big church here in St. Catholic? Everybody is Christian. Yeah. Right. What's the name of the ch local church here? What, what, what? Yeah, so the church of Christ, an Anglican, and a Presbyterian. Right. Okay. But then you have the Catholic Church. And Catholics do not believe in contraception, meaning condoms or the pills to prevent pregnancy. And so if I'm speaking of condoms and you're a Catholic, um, it might not be something you would like to hear, but please forgive me. But we have to speak about it. And Amelia says, Amelia says, condom. But before we go to condom, I don't want to make that a priority because the school, for school, we have to talk about the A, B, C of prevention. What's the A for? A big word, right? Abstinence. I'm quite sure the social study teacher is punching abstinence in you guys, right? That's why she's telling you not to kiss. Because kissing leads to other things. Other things. <laughs> but abstinence is something I, you know, you, you know what's the meaning of abstinence? No. You know what's the meaning of abstinence? I mean, what's the meaning of abstinence? 
Where's Mr. Rockcliffe? Where did he go? You gotta get a new chewing gum. Stay away. Good answer. Abstain means to stay away. Stay away from. Abstain from alcohol means stay away from alcohol. Abstain from meat. Stay away from meat. Any Hindus here? No Hindus. But you know, in, in, in the Hindu religion, over a period of time, they have to observe their religious activities. They don't eat meat for nine days. So they're abstaining from eating meat. Oh, Mr. Rockcliffe, there you are. You moved your chair. Right. So abstaining from sex means to stay away from sex. How many people will have difficulty in abstaining? Raise your hands. To stay away from sex. Right? Okay. No, that's true. You have a difficulty. You will have a difficulty. And they're right. They're, they're truthful. Right? So, you know, you have to go to church every day and, you know. But we are encouraging young people to abstain. Abstain from having sex. And trust me, it is not that um, it's rocket science and it's something we shouldn't talk about. But we know, um, actually, I'm speaking here. You want to come and demonstrate? <laughs> what are you telling her? That you guys are going to do something? <laughs> because if you open the newspaper, and we can't, as the saying says, as the saying says bury our head in the sand, and we see teenage pregnancy, all right? And so we know Teenagers are having sex, pregnancies. But it's not like we're by the thousands, but we do see the headlines. And with the Ministry of Health, we do get information from the various districts, the various regions, that this happens. Then you find that 12 year old girl travels from the west bank of Demerara, is missing, and she ends up all the way in Burbese, and she's got her 27 year old boyfriend. You haven't seen those stories? You guys have to read newspapers. Teachers, you've seen those stories, right? And then you hear a 45 year old man rape 12, 12 year old girl. And there's a school girl. So the thing is, we're trying to encourage young people, and even not only in school, but even out of school, if you've just left school, to abstain. With B, that's A for abstain, B for what? Come on, shout it loud. B, what, what does it mean to be faithful? Right, stick to one partner. Now, I'm quite surprised. In my days, there is this word that has two letters. I didn't realize in my days that that word existed. The two letters are E and X. People barely in grade 8 and they already got six X's. <laughs> how, much you, how much X you got, sir? <laughs> two? And you get married after you abstain for all those years, and it's difficult to abstain, you know. And then all of a sudden, now um, in my days, we used to talk the word was sweet woman, but they don't use that now. Side chick, right? <laughs> right, stick to one. Partner. Because by doing that, we reduce you know, the rate of infection in our country. A, abstinence. B, be faithful. C, condomize. And that's the last resort. We are encouraging people also, once you know you are to put yourself at risk of having unprotected sex, that 
you take a test, HIV test. And that's another long discussion. All right? Any questions? Yes, be the friend, friend. Come again. You gotta scream. How can you be re reinfected? That's a reinfection, not a good question. So not because somebody comes to say, I got HIV, I'm HIV positive, I use HIV positive, yeah, we can go and have fun without condoms. No, still have to use condoms. Any more questions? Very quickly, you know, HIV and AIDS really came and it, those who were infected, um, whatever reason they became infected, it became sort of a burden onto them. Um, they were not able to share it, share their infection, or not such share infection, share to their friends and family that they're HIV positive. They kept it to themselves. Why do you think they kept it to themselves? So, Mr. Rockliffe, well, who's your best friend? Who's friend? So, who, who are you just hanging out with? Everybody. Okay. Name a guy, one guy. Okay, let's say one of your best friends came up to you and said, uh, I went to the health center yesterday and I was tested HIV positive. What would you tell the person? What would you do? <laughs> you stop being his friend? Uh, no? <laughs> you encourage him. I mean, what would you do if one of your best friends come up to you and say that she's here to be positive? What do you tell her? You stop being her friend? No. No? Okay. You do just like what Rockwell said, encourage them to you know, be healthy and so forth. Who would stop being, who would stop be friends with someone who they told or told their HIV positive? Raise your hand. Who would stop be their friend? Right, because the only way you can contract HIV from someone is by those four ways we talk about. And so you could still talk to that person, hug that person, shake that person's hand, sit next to that person. And you will become infected. A person who's living with HIV and AIDS is no different than you. The only thing is, they have to drink one tablet every day for the rest of their lives. Second question. If you to become HIV positive, who is the first person you will tell and why? Who you tell, Mr. Rockley? The parents. Why? Okay. Who do you tell? 
Your parents. Who would you tell? Parents. And the bandwidth, who would you tell? Miss. Who would you tell? My partner. Your partner. So it's different. At the back there, social studies miss, who would you tell? <laughs> miss will keep it to herself, and maybe she's got her reason, I wouldn't ask her. But she's keeping it to herself because of particular reasons. Because sometimes people keep it to themselves because they're afraid people will go and talk about it. Because that would happen in some cases, you know, even today, we find um, persons when they go and tell their families that they're HIV positive, the family put them on the house. Yeah, it's no joke. Or build something, a place for them on the downstairs and put them to live there. HIV is not a death sentence. We should not treat persons who we know living with HIV differently than even when they were, before they were tested. Questions as we are about to wrap up. Go raise your hands uh, and then I think you're going to ask a question. Yes, Amelia? <laughs> Yeah. Once. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Even if it's the same day, because infection happens almost immediately. Once there's bruising, if you're infected. The thing is, why we start, why else, why we, you know, um, in about 2017, we started to, I, mean, I don't know why they would have started not to continue the work of going in school, but recently, within the past year and a half, we are seeing a slight increase in what we call new infections. So can you tell me, as a guess for you, how many people are on treatment in Guyana? How many people who have contracted HIV and AIDS and who are on treatment? I'm surprised that was not one of the questions you were asked. Another question I would another question I would get right up in front. I would get, sir, how AIDS come about? It means you all know the answer, right? Because you didn't ask that question. So we have just over 8,000 people who are on treatment. But there's more people, close to 9,000, almost an estimate of close to 10,000, who are on, who are HIV positive. Are on treatment? I but uh, an extra 2,000 who are not on treatment. And of course, one of the reasons, this is not to stigmatize anyone, we are finding a couple of regions where we have, and it's not a case whereby what I'm about to say is to stigmatize our Venezuelan brothers and sisters who have come into Guyana because of hardships. But we find in region two and region three, we start to see more new cases of HIV. All right? And so that's why we're going now into schools, doing this sensitization to let you know the dangers of HIV. And whilst you have Miss Social Studies, Miss is doing a little protection program, and other schools and the two and so forth, and the police are also trying to look over you. A lot of you, when you, as soon as you finish school, 
You had for Josh Dunn. You had for the cost. And with all this Saturday gone, I, and I just met this youngster, I can't remember his name, and I wouldn't mention his name. Um, I met this all this Saturday gone, and you know, he's a youngster from St. Cuthbert, from Pakuri. And I met him there, and I kind of assessed his life. And I realized, you know, that he was made vulnerable, and you too here can be made vulnerable. Because you will go out there looking for work. You will leave the home, you will leave this village, and you don't know what you will meet out there. And you will be sucked into, you will be drawn into the lifestyle of people there. And that, you can put yourself in grave risk. And I've seen this done with a lot of Am youths, Amerindian youths, who would have come into the coast, especially from the hinterland region, one, seven, eight, and nine. Those far flung region. All right, so why I'm here today is, yes, to let you know today, the danger, so when you head outside, you know, and even within some of your own village, you know, years and years ago, I went to a region, I, I, in region nine, but I wouldn't say the village, and normally what we do, we would train, we would spend two days training the youngsters, and then we'd ask them to go in, into their communities. And so this youngster who I trained, in school, he left school, he got a job, and one day he was able to be communicated. After today, we still communicating. And one day he texted me and said, uh, he's sorry to tell me that he was infected with HIV. And the next line was, I got the education, but still I got catch. And today, because he lives in that area, he doesn't want to access the treatment in that area, because everybody knows him. He's a teacher. So, once he doesn't come from that area to Georgetown, I would collect his medication, put it in a bus, and send it up into that region for him. So, you can put just, you can find yourself in a difficult situation. All right? As I close, any questions? No questions? If there's no questions, I, I did forget to ask, uh, I, I didn't mention it, um, is that you could have, just like how the girls, you could have um, write the questions and set it up in front and I will try to see if I can answer it. But, um, because I know for a fact, in, um, uh, when I go, especially in Amerindian communities, uh, it's always hard to engage them in speaking. And, there was a, and I leave you with these two questions for you to answer. Not here, not now, but write these two questions, answer to these two questions. So there was an exercise I would normally do um, in my HIV work with young people. And the two questions I would ask is, are, who am I and what do I really want? But the exercise is done in such a way that you know, we all sit in a circle, that's 20 or 25 of us, and they each got up and they would answer the question. Now when you go to the coastland and you work with at the coastland students, they speak. When I go to the Amerindian community, they don't speak. And so I decided one day, when I went to my next Amerindian community, I decided I would change the method of the exercise. So I went to my computer, and I typed the first question, who am I? And I drew on the computer some lines. And then halfway down the page, I drew the second question, what do I really want? And I drew the lines, I printed 30, and I shared it out for that exercise. I said, right, you will be surprised to know what I got in writing. Fantastic writing. That's when they're able to pour out. And sometimes even the paper was too limited. And so yes, sometimes some, some people would like to write. And I encourage you to write the answers to those two questions. Who am I? And what do I really want? Thank you very much for listening. Stay safe. The students, our village council, the PTA, I'd like to express our gratitude.
What you've done here for us today is re very refreshing, informative. Did we all learn something? Yes. And we're happy to have you. Okay. I'll hand the flyers over to your social studies department and they can probably utilize it in the classroom as well and distribute it. You will benefit. So, sir, thank you. I also would like to acknowledge and, and special thank to the support group, the Pakuri support group, who played a very important role in reaching out. Sir Land is here to Mr. Um, Hussein um, for having you here, bringing you here today, or accompany you, sorry. So, thank you all. See you next time. I hope to see you another visit. Pay us another visit. Um, no, no, not leaving us yet. Our appreciation, we'd like to present you with a small present from Amelia, <laughs> from the village council and the school. Thank you. Thank you. You have taught us. It was very informative. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope you like it. It's not to use in the river, it's just to put. Oh, in my home as a child, there was one just like this in my parents' home. And um, I don't know, but this now would be in my home. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Thank you very, very much. All right. One more time for everyone here. Okay. So it's